Let's bring in Sarah Sanders. A busy morning there at the White House. White House Press Secretary joins us now. Sarah, good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Sandra. Great uh, to be with you. Great, great to have you on America's Newsroom. So first up, immigration. The president's still threatening to uh, shut down our border. Is he standing firm on that threat? Uh, look, the president's not threatening. The president's taking his job as the commander in chief uh, very seriously in terms of protecting the American people. Even Obama's own Department of Homeland Security cabinet secretary uh, this past week has said that there's a crisis at the border. We're glad that others and Democrats and people in the mainstream media are starting to understand the crisis that the president has been talking about for the last two years. We have to take action. Democrats in Congress are leaving us no choice. This is not the path the president wants to take, but they're mm. leaving us no choice because they're unwilling to work with us to fix the problem because they're too busy playing politics instead of doing their jobs. Well, one could certainly make the case that it does sound indeed like a threat, considering members of Congress, even some within the president, its own party, including Senator Kennedy, who just said this is not a good idea to shut down the border. He said this would hurt GDP. You've heard that across the aisle. Democrats making the case that this would be uh, really hurt the job situation in the United States. I want to ask you about what we just heard from John Roberts, our, our, our reporter there at the White House, uh, on Mexico and a new plan to take action to apprehend large numbers at Mexico's southern border. Uh, addressing its transit visa program. Can you tell us any more about what Mexico is now doing to slow this down? Uh, that's certainly a big part of this process is Mexico uh, stepping up and helping the United States do more by helping uh, stop people from coming across our border by stopping them in Mexico. Also offering asylum in Mexico while they wait on an asylum claim to be processed here in the United States. These are things that we've seen uh, them do over the last several weeks and they're stepping up and taking a greater sense of responsibility in this process. That's a great thing. We need to them to continue to to do that so that we aren't forced to take drastic action like closing the ports of entry at our border because we simply have no choice. Look, everyone wants to talk about the cost of doing that. That is certainly, again, not something we want to happen. The president's the one that is responsible for the last two years of economic growth, economic boom, and the number of jobs that we have in this country. We don't want to see that hurt. But at the same time, the president's number one responsibility is to protect American life. Democrats may not care about that. They may be perfectly fine watching women and children exploited as they make the treacherous journey up from the southern, uh, up from the south across the southern border. They may be perfectly fine seeing babies, frankly, killed right up until the moment of birth. But this president isn't. He takes his job of protecting American life very seriously, and he's going to do what it takes to make sure that happens. All right. So we'll watch for more developments on that uh, as we learn more. And on to House Democrats uh, moving ahead with uh, a subpoena for the full Mueller report this week. They do not seem to be letting this issue go, Sarah. Where does it go from here? Look, I think it just shows, again, what sore losers the Democrats really are. They got beat in 2016 because we had a better candidate with a better message and a better vision, vision for America. Now we're seeing uh, that they've gotten beat again when it comes to the Mueller report. They were convinced. Not only were they convinced, but they went out and they lied about what they expected the Mueller report to tell America, and they got it wrong. They got it wrong in 2016. What would the, what would the president like, What would the president like to see happen here? I mean, he's been for full... Uh, disclosure of this report from the beginning. The president's been uh, transparent throughout this process, but at the same time, the president wants to allow the attorney general to do his job, uh, and he is letting him do that, and we'll see what happens from this point. Meanwhile, onto Obamacare. The president has said that this is going to be, a, uh, healthcare is going to be a, a Republican issue. This is going to be big in 2020, but what we know now is the president is saying no Obamacare vote until after the 2020 election. What is the president's goal on health care right now? Certainly the president wants to be the party of health care. It's an important issue, and it's one that he wants to see us address. He'd love to be able to address it now, but we know that Democrats are controlled by the far radical left wing of their party, and they are a total contrast to what we need and what the president wants to see happen when it comes to health care. They want to see this Medicare for all government takeover of health care, and the president wants to see health care returned to the power of the patient. He wants the people that are receiving 
leaving the care to get to make decisions about it. They want the individuals to be able to control their own decisions about their health care, while the radical left wants the government to tell you what you can and can't do, what doctor you can and can't see, what procedures you can and can't have. And that's simply unacceptable to this president. And it should be unacceptable to every single American that wants the freedom to make their own decisions about what they do when it comes to their health care. How, the how, how does he make this a winning issue for his party in 2020? Look, I think we do what we can administratively in the meantime, what we've been doing over the last two years. The president has fought to lower prescription drug prices, and he's been successful. In fact, it's the first time in nearly 50 years that prescription drug prices have gone down. The president has fought to make sure that we have more affordable care, more competitive care. We've implemented uh, association health care plans that have allowed more people to have options. We're going to continue looking at ways we can do that, and we're going to lay out principles principles like protecting pre-existing conditions that we want to see in a health care plan. And look, if Democrats change their minds and decide to get serious about fixing problems instead of playing politics, we're here and we're ready to work with them do, to fix the broken how system. How does the president respond to some of the fears and the concerns that have been shared within his own party uh, about this move and about making an election a referendum on Obamacare without something solidly there to replace it? I don't think that the election has to be a referendum on Obamacare. It needs to be a discussion about what works on health care, and that's what the president's doing. He's laying out the things that we need to see in a good health care system, uh, whether that's more quality care, whether that's more affordable choices, um, and that's bringing those costs down. Again, the president wants to lay out those principles. Um, he's been a hardcore advocate on protecting pre-existing conditions. You'll continue to see him talk about that. Uh, but we know that Democrats aren't serious about getting anything done. They want to play games. Uh, they want to attack the president. They want to play investigator instead of legislator. And they need to decide what they were elected to do. Um, and so far, we've seen over the last 100 days, that's very little. All right, I'm being told that um, Jim Jordan right now is uh, speaking. A House committee hearing is happening on Capitol Hill right now. Uh, you see Chairman C Cummings there. Uh, Jim Jordan was teeing off earlier in response to uh, a whistleblower coming forward, and, and, and the details of that were brought forward by Elijah Cummings on the White House overturning 25 denied security clearances, Sarah. And, and we heard Jared Kushner um, defend this last night on an interview on Fox News with Laura Ingram. But what more can you tell us this morning about this and, and the whistleblower claims? Uh, look, Sandra, you know I can't get into a discussion on individual security clearances. What I can tell you is that Democrats are acting in bad faith throughout this process. They're asking for personal confidential uh, information that they know they have absolutely no right to see. We have worked with Democrats. We've been cooperative in this process. We have shown them uh, security process documents uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks. We've invited them to the White House to sit down with government officials here in the administration to discuss that process. Um, and we're, we're, we've been cooperative on that front. But we're not going to put the three million people who are full-time employees of the federal government that hold security clearances, personal information at risk, because Democrats want to pretend and play games instead of do their jobs. Can I ask you, it's, uh, Trisha Newbold, do you know her? I mean, she's an 18-year White House employee. She's the whistleblower. Uh, she came forward and said that she and other career staffers denied security clearances for 25 Trump administration officials, of which she said were three senior officials. Uh, again, I, I, I don't know the individual, um, and um, I can't get into talking about security individual security clearances here at the White House, because unlike Democrats, we want to protect people's personal uh, confidential information. Let's not forget three million Americans have security clearances that work for the government. And by exploiting one, you're exploiting all of their personal information. And I think Democrats know that. And I think what they're doing is dangerous. And I think what they're doing is sad and shameful. And America deserves much better than that. Sarah Sanders is at a busy morning at the White House. We appreciate you coming on the program this morning. Absolutely. Thanks for Come having me. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.